Hello, welcome back to Wasted. I'm Jade Star, joined as always by my favorite man who shouldn't be anywhere near a desert, Olish. Unless he's melted already. <laughs> uh, so we have a lot of unfinished business at uh, the Oni Express. There were a few things uh, I just got tired of sitting around listening to people talk at me about. So we're going to go talk to those other two people. And by which you mean you're going to go talk to Dick. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to have a lot of interaction with Dick today. Greetings, uh, waste of light. Is that the right one? Did I use the right term? Ah, the kids today with the slang and so forth. It's distressing and unfamiliar. It is the parlance of a rambunctious youth with little regard for tradition. Yes. Anyhow, I'm Dick and this is Kissinger. A pleasure. Nickname. Reluctantly, I assure you. Please don't busy yourself with the mental strain of figuring out why. It's never made any sense to me either. I suppose the scum lords, the gangs, the no good nicks and the like, they despise success. You know, there's a cabal out to get me. There are people as yet in their cultural and mental infancy. Agreed. It's thrilling, of course, to see another young, violent drunkard in our midst. And I sincerely hope we can be of service to you. Oh, no need to be concerned. We're not like these hucksters and charlatans. They take a man's last sheep from right out of his cheeks. No, we have more than enough TP to be comfortable for the rest of our lives. It is confirmed as three ply. Magnificent stuff, like the tongues of angels. You really ought to try it. But that's besides the point. In our advanced age, I suppose we're some variety of consultant. We simply offer our expertise, our knowledge, our support. You know what they say? Two heads are better than one? Discounting, of course, moments nocturnal when a man seeks to relive certain urges. <clears throat> well, our, our new friend here has little interest in such matters. So, how may we help you? So Dick offers guidance about you know, the coolers. Kissinger hates it when I use the M word. But in my teens, it wasn't like it is now. Barely any radiation at all these days. In my teens, I was exposed to an awful lot of radiation. Wasn't uncommon at all to see all manner of mutants. Anyway, Kissinger started a sprout for me down there. And not to put too fine a point on it, but I was of an age where I was about to become best friends with that area anyway. So things worked out pretty well. Some more so than others. <laughs> well, from what little I've heard, it was built by or for the use of doctors. Smart fellows, to be sure, but useless eggheads to a man. The title impresses me little. When one is stripped of accolades, accomplishments, guns, vile haircuts, and whatnot, what he does then, that is the true measure of a man. Well, uh, sorry, I seem to be striking the wrong tone for such an occasion. Some environmental contaminant, no doubt their own doing meddling quacks, seems to have turned whoever is inside into some manner of mindless, violent beast. Now, of course, in the place and time we find ourselves in, this is not altogether unusual. However, these people, they scratch and bite. They are reduced to primitives. Quite so. Roddy mans, the kids call them. You'll be pleased to know that they can operate a firearm. Again, not unexpected for these lily-livered intellectual types. But the scratching and the biting and what have you. It smarts, to be sure. But it's also highly infectious. Such unpleasantness is usually best dealt with from afar. I wouldn't recommend tangling with them directly. Do the American thing, and shoot them indiscriminately. Or employ... devious cunning. Ah, the spewmen. Yes, they inherited a great deal of goodness from their American ancestry. But through the hard work of today's youth, they overcame it. Virile, strong, this and that. But a slovenly, unthinking bunch. Like the rest of you, but more so. 
It is sometimes wise when faced with a difficult opponent to undermine them. Ah, yes, the uh, tripping hazards the kids are so fond of. The proverbial nuclear option. It may feel a shade cowardly, but what the big folks have in brawn, they make up for in a complete lack of brains. Lure them onto a pile of explosives. It won't be hard. Much easier than beating them up, that's for sure. There is an issue I wish to speak about with you in private. Dick, if you please, I must touch upon sensitive issues with our associate. Oh, certainly. Just let me know when you're done. Give me the signal. You know the sort. Please, come a little closer. Prying eyes turn up in places most unexpected in modern times. There is an issue that drives a wedge between myself and my companion, Dick. Dick remains blessed well into his advanced stage with a head full of hair. Such blessings have not extended to me, and I have become as bald as the day I was mutated. A situation I wish to remedy but have not the personal means. Appearances count for much in such a vile and reprehensible time and place. My presentation presents a disunited front and I appear as a junior partner in our enterprise. An unfair and frustrating position given the extent of my input. I do not wish to shrink into insignificance in Dick's shadow. <laughs> I intend to go hard as it is said by the youngsters in my capacity as a professional. To do so it has become apparent that I require a prosthetic. Relieve 25 residents of the wasteland of their scalps. That would seem an adequate supply of air. Return to me upon completion of this task and you shall be appropriately rewarded. <laughs> we are we're getting a toupee for Kiss and Jerk. Certainly a uh, certainly an interesting quest. So so Nixon is the tutorial that tells us how to fight different people and Kissinger is questing us for a toupee. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> a little strange, huh? Rather be killing than chilling. We've got Barstown best on tap. Welcome to the gin and gout. We got the swills that kill, and they have too. 30 sheets to whet your whistle. So what can I get you? But uh, now's a good chance to go grab a drink to, uh, you know, pilot uh, what we have just witnessed. But also I mean, after Nixon and Kissinger already had to. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, this is a really great mixer of the day, too, though. Uh, two armor piercing to all of your attacks. It's really one of the best. Good so far. How do you want that prepared? Ah. All right. Here you go. Bottoms up. Hello, welcome back to Getting Wasted and Wasted. I'm James Starr, and today we're going to make a Cantharios. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It is a variation of the Paloma, another tequila-based drink uh, that combines tequila with a lot of citrus. So, uh, traditionally it's a, what was it, a soaked clay cup. This is actually a new cocktail to me. I don't have that. We're going with a highball, giant ice cube. Uh, our first pour is going to be two ounces of tequila. Um... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, got a little extra. I uh, should mention that this uh, this recipe, I found multiple variations of, so some of it has different proportions for different things. Uh, I also got a jigger, so you can see what these look like. It has little granulated lines, so you can see where the ounces are. <laughs> so much like the sunrise, we're going to get an ounce of orange juice. Pour that above the camera with my very, very official Tropicana's juice here. So, ounce of orange juice. There you go. And then we're going to get a half ounce each of lemon juice and lime juice. So I'm going to take a look at this. See the half ounce line. There you go. That uh, is just, uh, you can find that in your mixer's aisle of any uh, beverage store. Half ounce of that. Half ounce of our lime. Uh, 
recipe calls for a pinch of salt. If I can get this open. So I'm going to take whoop, too much. So I'm going to just take a pinch, drop that in there. One moment. I'm going to waste the rest of that. And then the last thing is we're going to float four ounces of grapefruit soda on the top of it. So this is just, uh, this is just a can of squirt. Uh, we could measure it out. But four ounces is probably about all that's left in the glass. So we're just going to pour that right on top. To about a safe level. And lastly, stir. Uh, you can find a proper cocktail spoon. Or stir. Uh, I don't have one, so I'm just going to use this long spoon I had in my kitchen. Clean that up. And this is one of the variations of a Paloma, the Camparios. And as I said before, there are different ingredients with different proportions. Ooh, I see why they said to add salt. It's pretty nice. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Let's get to the coolers. Ah. So, I've got my Cantiaros. Cantiar to I, I cannot pronounce the Spanish name. Uh, it's actually quite good. It's the first time I've actually made it. Um, I went looking for an unusual drink because... Uh, I already made a Tequila Sunrise, and, uh, well, you'll see why that's relevant at the end of the video. Uh, plus, I also just had tequila laying around, so I might as well use it. I have my own ration of Canadian maple whiskey. Oh, uh, sort sort liege, right? Yeah, sort of liege. Sort of liege. It's generally not available in the United States, which is why I'm rationing it. <laughs> right, I get it. Yeah, I had a bottle of that once. Uh, Megishu had to send it to me. Yeah, he had to send it to you because there is no supplier in the United States. <laughs> for about a year, God, the company also supplies for Jägermeister supplying in the United States, but for some reason that fell through. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it's terrible. But... If you ever have an excuse to go to Canada, find someone and pick some up. It's really good. It really is. I, I'm not usually uh, much of a whiskey drinker, but it's, uh... Well, how did Megishu describe it to me? Uh, maple syrup, but whiskey? More or less. Yeah. It's also good poured on ice cream. Huh. I hadn't thought of that. I, I didn't invent that. It, no. it comes from the website. Oh, really? Okay, that's pretty <laughs> rad. I guess you also sent me, like, the, the private reserve version, which a lot of companies will do occasionally with those like, small runs of slightly higher proof, but I'm actually not as big a fan of it. Oh. Kenny likes it, though. I mean, she's is, she is a big whiskey fan, and that is more like whiskey. Okay. Yeah. I guess you knew I liked sweet uh, alcohol, so... Yeah, so that's why it you got it. sweet, but it's not cloying. Federation. I do know a cocktail that involves soda lish and root beer. Ooh. That's not a combination I would anticipate. It's called magic. <laughs> Literal magic? Well, Sertilage is French for spells. Oh, is it? I'm gonna kill you! Show me your I'm always interested when root beer shows up in places uh, I don't expect it to. Like pies. I, like, or... I don't actually know the recipe. I'd have to, to go get it from my buddy. Oh, okay. Let me we'll see if we can so. retrieve it. Nice. 
Hey, floor booze. Mmm, drink. Mmm, floor booze. Drink! Oh. <laughs> well. Drip. They can't all be good. Uh, at least this is less bad. Yeah, sneak is... It's an okay skill to have go to zero. I never actually, from previous streams, knew the answer to this, but stats can't actually go below zero, right? I don't believe so, no. I mean, that sounds like some science. Uh, well, not for next time, but time after that, maybe? Because uh, I will, at the end of this video, have a very easy way to test that. I know we haven't really been talking about a whole lot of what's been going on, but the, the early floors are the cooler or not. Right. It, it, this isn't terribly new. Evacuation staging is, uh, like I said, kind of just like the new zone. There's nothing particularly dangerous here, and there's so many lockers uh, filled with med stins that it's really easy to stock up. And You can basically come in here with nothing and leave with a kit and all the medical supplies you can carry. If you already have a kit, you can go through it relatively quickly and just top up. Yep. Which is more or less my plan here from here I on. I, I do need to kill as many raiders as possible for Dick. You do all sorts of things for Dick. <laughs> oh man, it's a tough wasteland out there. And they've got three plots. Squeal! Tongues of angels. <laughs> Killing 25 enemies is a relatively trivial quest. It because really is. There's no way you're not going to complete it. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of people who can do it. Whatever, I drink to end the, uh, the grunt on it. I think in the future, uh, there's going to have to be a few more runs into a uh, cooler one. The bottom three levels uh, are dangerous, and uh, there's always tempting booze down there. And so one of the problems uh, arises, or at least choices, not really a problem, is on level 10? 9 or 10, I think it's 10, uh, there's the booze, which are going to be really good booze as compared to anything we've seen so far. But a floor below that is the completion of the cooler, and, you know, forward progress. It's always hard to make a decision between, you know, like if I'm in good shape, just beat the cooler, or maybe grab a really good hangover that will, you know, benefit me for the rest of however long my dude stays alive. Yeah, and that could be one of those things where it can be sort of a choice paralysis issue. Because the, the idea of taking good hangovers for the long run is really good. Uh, it, it, it's appealing because you want to, you know, be strong. But also, we also have to accept that every single run is transient. There's a possibility that you'll lose everything. And making forward progress in the game is something that all death can't take away from you. Yeah, it's true. What I'm saying is, accept inevitable death. <laughs> and move forward when you can. I think... I think I... Like, I kind of agree with you, but for slightly different reasons. Having played this a few times, I remember my first playthrough or two just being like, I want to have all of the hangovers. I want to just juice my dude up to be like Superman before I beat the game because I want to go in as super buff and strong as I, I possibly can. And... Like, that's fine, but it meant a whole lot of, like, 20 or 30 minute excursions into mid or deep into a, a, a cooler just to find a good hangover and drink it. And in the end, like, really didn't need to do that. I could have shaved hours off of, like, my first completion time by just accepting that I was good enough 
and I would be okay to go challenge, like, the boss. Yeah, the, the thing that you mentioned to, to completely shift genres is actually talk about uh, very old roguelike anger. Uh, this, this came up in the roguelike thread. The, the old style of playing Angband was to, to spend a lot of time going back and forth between floors and only moving forward when you feel sufficiently powerful. And there came to be something of a realization that the things that kill you aren't necessarily things that, you know, repeating floors would protect you against. Rather, it's more of like a a very bad situation that you just get very unlucky to, to get stuck into. You know, certain types of enemies combined with certain types of... Mm, floor boots. Drink! Uh, terrain or, or level like uh, So the the people who play Angbang to sort of change the way that they approach the game and now becomes moving more quickly and generating as few levels as possible because... That means it's less likely that there's the one in twenty chance that a particular type of enemy will spawn at all. And the faster you go deeper into the dungeon, the right. more likely you are to get good loot. Cross the bridge and fight Tiamat once instead of going back and forth and risk running into Warmack. Right. <laughs> For a uh, a very old reference there. Only think that much should be older than the original Final Fantasy. Holy shit! I mean, I guess you know, I. Net hacks or roguelikes are, uh, are ancient, aren't they? Yeah. But anyway, so the moral of the story is that the more time you spend dithering about, the more likely it is that you know a randomly generated really bad situation is going to happen. So, except less than perfection. Yeah. You know, perfection being the enemy of good. Right. Um, I'm always reminded, I think, of Sid Meier's quote that, uh, if left up to the players, they will optimize all the fun out of a game. Yeah. Um, there's something similar that I've heard, which is that players will optimize themselves into pounding nails to dicks. That's... I may, may not be remembering the quote exactly, but <laughs> it's basically the same thing. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure that one wasn't Sid Meier's. <laughs> no, it, it's... Talk about Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Right. Which is a newer roguelike, which unfortunately has optimized all of the fun out of the game. I, I remember some people recommended that, and I had a bit of fun with it. Uh, I was never particularly good at it. I remember uh, very clearly not wanting to upset the halberd of temporal disruption or whatever. <laughs> Do not up upset the halberd of disruption. Yeah. Uh, and it looked like a flooded good game, of disruption. but then, uh, yeah, I do remember hearing people say, like, oh, you know, this and this for optimal strats, and eat the purple, and this, and, and just like, man, I just want to have a Minotaur Berserker run through and kill things. Well, that, that was the thing, is it? you used to be able to do that, but it, it's hard to quantify, like, I feel bad talking about every other game other than the one we're talking about, <laughs> like we're watching right now. Um, we were talking about that, roguelikes in general. It's fine. We're on yeah, topic. Yeah, ro roguelikes in general. Is that there? There is a balance between like trying to avoid. Excuse me. Degenerate, boga, boga. optimizing behaviors that aren't fun. Like the idea of you know, in a, in a roguelike, or for example, in this, of scouring every single floor to the absolute amount, even beyond the time limit make sure that you don't possibly you know miss a, a drop that's valuable right that's one thing that wasted does very well you have a very limited inventory normally you're not jade who finds <laughs> all of the fucking fanny packs immediately right. and the reality of the situation is, is that the things that you can find aren't amazingly better enough to risk doing that Scouring the level for loot isn't likely to find you anything substantially better. Like, the, the Emma Grand that you got really lucky to find is, is going to carry you for a very long time. You will never get rid of that. Oh, that's but there's also right, nothing right. there's nothing better than that for to do what it is. There's no, you know, M16 plus 3. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 
there's probably technically something better that uses rifle ammo, but... Mmm, floor boobs. Drink! Hey, we got a good one. Is Tinker really that good? Uh, it can be. There are certainly a couple uses for it. Um, I mean, so it's nice to have. For right now, you know like those traps that are just like guns hooked up to a, uh, a record player? that are. Oh, that's right. Tinker lets you disarm them. Uh, not only does Tinker let you disarm them, enough tinkering lets you unload them. Yeah, free, free resource is always good. Yep. Um, later on, uh, it has a f few more uses. Uh, you know, it's Fallout. Uh, it's not much of a spoiler. Energy weapons are a thing that exists in this game, and the more Tinker uh, you have, the better you are at energy weapons. And that is true. Yeah. I forgot that Tinker is shot for energy weapons. Yeah. Uh, I th is it a Blit or Tinker? I forgot which one, but one of those two stats also adds uh, more half seconds of delay to tripping hazards you set off. I believe that's Tinker. The Blit gives you more explosives damage. Tinker not giving you direct defense. Just sort of works like putting more points into explosives in Deus Ex. I haven't played a Deus Ex in a long time. I mean, that was the main use of the explosive skill. It's not like Lambs didn't immediately one-shot anything. Uh, more points just let you disarm them. Like, oh, just, more sloppily. Right, don't get blown up yourself. Yeah, okay, you know, good time. It's, it's important to uh, not blow your face off. Yeah. Oh, hey, that looks familiar. Can't drink anymore. Yeah. Most uh, most boozes that have a unique effect like that, uh, you can only drink once. <laughs> I uh. I feel like the uh, the correspondence between these people took a turn when the radiation hit. Pretty sure I went to high school with this person. You know, I feel like this is just a cultural thing. This explains why there are so many people willing to do violence in the bathrooms. <laughs> it's just the traditions like that of founder. It's their traditions of mm. CA1 floor boobs. Drink. Oh, well then. Well, they can't all be good, but at least I still have my crosshair. <laughs> I mean, I'd say that you you didn't grow up in a time where you didn't have crosshairs, but you're the same age as me, so it's yeah. not true. So it's a really good helmet. Yeah. They, yeah, they try to make all the stats equally. Like oh, we can go negative. Oh. Well, yeah, well, there you go. Well, negative five sneak still doesn't matter. Sneak sucks. Fuck sneak. <laughs> it can be great, but it's not worth going out of your way for. My favorite Skyrim mod is the one that, if you have a bow equipped and go into stealth mode, instantly kills you. Oh, wow. <laughs> because it's such a degenerate playstyle that everybody does. Yeah. I mean, I even did it a little bit, but I'd usually, like, only get, like, the opening shot. And then either just be detected or just follow it up with sword. It's a hell of a mod, though. I really appreciate the the sincerity behind it. <laughs> it's just called like nerf stealth monsters. I feel like it's uh, underselling the potency of the mod. It does exactly what it says. It nerfs stealth, ar <laughs> stealth archers. Yeah, but that's. <sighs> Okay, I've had a little bit to drink. I thought to make an analogy that was way overblown, but I still feel like 
calling that a nerf is a, is a very large understatement to the effect of what it does. I really like that that Roddy that was just <laughs> creeping around the edge. Yeah. He's like, I, I heard some scary noises out here. I better investigate, but carefully. without the signboard at the intersection. Although, did I just notice something? How many times have I played this and never realized? No, that's that's white as well. I thought because it wasn't green or red that the, the white door was uh, the destination. I mean, it is, but I don't think that was actually an indicator. Nice. Kind of, maybe, useful? Not really. That's actually really good. That's nice. Being able to carry more ammo is always good. 100 rounds per stack, and you can double up on it. That may be one of the legitimately best floor uh, the <laughs> hangovers you can get. Yeah. Which explains why you would have taken it. And yeah, Inspector yep. Tequila Sunrise. Right, which is why it was a little unfortunate I used a Tequila Sunrise the previous video, but that was a, a short stance Sunrise, and I don't think there's many drinks that I could, uh, could have found that have Sunrise in the name. Uh, so that's why I just used my leftover Tequila to make a, a Kentaro Toast. It's close. I'm not good you know, at it's, it's Spanish. It's one that I haven't had, but I unfortunately have an aversion to Tequila. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I mean, it's a, a Paloma variant, and there's a lot of Palomas. Essentially, a Paloma is what if tequila plus a lot of citrus. And there's a it's, lot of different ways to do that. You know, I like citrus. It's good. Yeah. Stop scurvy. Yep. Uh, like this, this really makes the tequila uh, pretty bearable because there's, what is this? Uh, four, two ounces of various citrus plus uh, like about a four ounce, maybe a three ounce float of... Um, uh, grapefruit soda on it, so it's it's not overly boozy. Uh, there's a lot to hide the tequila. The, the only tequila that I can actually tolerate, and I have no idea what it was, I tried it once, it was tequila based, it was orange flavored, and when I say orange flavored, I have no idea what the brand is, I have no idea how to find it, but it tasted exactly like an orange Tic Tac. <laughs> Alright. Or in this case, reduced by two thirds. So what's on your mind? If it's something big, don't tell us, since technically we'll be taking on the majority of the problem. I'm retired, you inconsiderate brat. It is done. Splendid. Yes, I feel a new confidence swelling within me. It is a token of my appreciation. I'm gonna get out of here before his confidence swells too much. Uh, but yeah, negative ten shoot on that head armor. Also negative three hit, so I don't really know what the point of this is. I mean, it's got a blit and tinker, so if you're going an explosives energy build? But negative three hit is costing you armor. Negative ten shoot just means you're not going to hit anything. Yeah, the, the big boost to a blit and tinker is... Like, shoot is the most important stat. It's the one that's used most often. Hit right. is arguably even better like if it had that negative shoot but actually like plus hit i'm like okay it's an item if you're going to go in melee but it also I, has I, negative hit so it's not i just look at that and the total negatives on stats is greater than the total positives yeah most everything else is balanced or a net positive it looks nice though yeah. <laughs> uh i just cut out some inventory management um so, next time, we're going to go back to the Oni Express. We're going to talk to that guy that's looking for his wife. Uh, and that's the end of this video, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.